Hey, I'm Brant along with Sherry, and we're from Shine.fm, and we want to announce to you that you are the Church of the Week. Yay! Congratulations. Congratulations. I also have this very special thing. that part of what they get? A little flourish there. That's all right. Nobody expects the flute. I wasn't expecting Hi, it's Brian and Steph from the Shine.fm Afternoon Adventure. Congratulations to Virgie Christian Church with Pastor Bill Taylor for being Church of the Week. You know, it's interesting. Shine.fm truly believes that music reaches people and it makes a difference in their lives. Advertisers figured this out a long time ago because they began putting jingles to commercials and we still remember those today. I mean, we all know that we're stuck on Band-Aids because Band-Aids are stuck on us from that song and now you have it in your head, don't you? But nonetheless, isn't it great to know that the music being sung in church today and the music that you hear on Shine.fm, that will be with the kids listening today in church for the rest of their life. So we're super excited to be able to be that catalyst of music and hope speaking into people's lives through the week. And we're also super excited to uh, congratulate you on your 100th anniversary of Virgie Christian Church, but also for being Shine.fm's Church of the Week. Thanks for listening. Tune in when you leave today at 89.7. And we also want to thank and congratulate the Olivet Nazarene University outstanding volunteers. They are Helen Carr and Claudette Kingma. Congratulations. Thanks for making a difference for the kingdom of God. All right, I have already decided I'm not standing on the stage. I can't do it. I'm tall enough, everyone should be able to see me, and if not, you're not really missing a whole lot anyways. You know, what's funny is, is I kind of alluded to it when we started uh, our prayer time, is that today we want to talk about, and we are just reliving memories. The memories of this church and all that it's done for a hundred years, this church has stead, uh, stood in that position in Virgie, Indiana, as a staple of who Jesus is. When I came here, you know, I grew up in Indiana. I've driven through Rensselaer my entire life. My grandparents had a place on Lake Schaefer. My, my father now lives on Lake Schaefer. I had no idea that I would live in Rensselaer. My address is Rensselaer. God has such a bold sense of humor to say, as I was driving through going, I will never live here. He was like, uh, 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 don't tell me what you're going to do. I will. But I want to just take some time to remember. What just happened is a memory that will be made in all of your lives and in Claudette and Helen and their family for years to come. And that's what's wonderful. When we stop and think about memories, it's such a beautiful thing. Unfortunately, you know what's funny? It was crazy. Yesterday, I was listening to the Shine.fm, and I believe it was Branton Sherry, and I'm going to misquote it. I was driving, so I tried to write it down. And if any of you have seen my handwriting, when I'm sitting down, you know how bad it is when I'm driving over the speed limit on a country road. But Brant was talking about this very same thing. He was talking about memories. And he actually cited, I believe it was uh, C.S. Lewis, who said, you know, sometimes we become such a spectator that we lose and we forget about what's going on. We we take so many pictures and selfies, especially nowadays. Man, you can't go anywhere that somebody's not doing that. um, That we have just forgotten about living life. Guys, today as we come together, I, don't, I, I want you to take pictures and I want you to have memories and I want you to share memories. I want you to just enjoy each other's company all day long. But I also don't want you to get so caught up in the memories that you forget to make new ones. That's what it's about. Memories are all part of our life. In fact, I want to just read off a couple things. If you were alive or remember any of these, raise your hand. The Great Depression. Come on, I know some of you, everybody's like, I ain't raising my hand for that one. Forget about it. World War II, Korean War, the Cold War. Now, most of you guys should raise your hand for that because that was actually 1955 through 1975, okay? Um, I'm sorry, the Cold War was actually till 91. I apologize. Vietnam War, okay? When JFK died, when JFK Jr. died. There's a whole group of kids going, come on, get to something for me, man. (laughs) 
How about Watergate? Bicentennial. I remember the Bicentennial a lot. Now, I was alive for some of these, but I don't really remember them. How about the really important one of everything I've talked about so far? The 1980 Dream Team U.S. Hockey Team. Woo! Come on! Challenger. Desert Storm, Desert Shield. Oklahoma City Bombing. Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> Waco, Texas. LA Riots. 2011. How about 2001? 9 11. Hurricane Katrina. About June 15th, 2015, the last time the Blackhawks won the Stanley Cup. Woo! Come on! How about your wedding day? How about the day your kids were born? How about the day you were born? baptized and immersed and changed for the glory of Jesus Christ. See, all these things, some of those, many that I went through the list, you know, it's funny is you can actually go online and say, what are the most horrific things that have happened in the last hundred years? And that's what comes up. And we look at that and we go, there's devastation and there's horrible things, but in that there is always glory in it. There's always memories that we take out of it and we can remember I wanted to throw those last ones in there because we, you get done with, like, we just celebrated, or remembered, I should say, 9-11 uh, last week. And it's always one of those things that we, we stop and we remember. Do you remember on each one of those that I said exactly what you were doing? If I were to walk around right now and say, what were you doing on this day, I bet you have a memory. I bet you have a memory of maybe the emotion you felt. Or, or what you were doing, or where you were at, or who you were with, and how they felt. Imagine if we as a church could make that impact on others to say, you are a sinner, unsaved, but I know a guy. I got this guy that can give you new life. Eternal life, everlasting life. And that's what we should be celebrating. If you have your Bibles or you have a, a pad or whatever and you want to go to it, turn with me to John 14. You know, there's a quote that says, we never realize the value of something in our lives until it becomes a memory. Until it becomes a memory. How many things do we, we see a picture and go, oh, I totally forgot about that. Um, and the, there are other things that you go, I will never, ever forget that. Memories can be a wonderful thing. Here, uh, the Apostle John is writing, and he's remembering about Jesus and about what Jesus said. Verse 16, it says, Jesus says, and I tried to do the red letter. I'm, I'm going to throw this out there. I don't think I, I was slacking. The red letters don't show up on this. So you guys would have been like, Jesus didn't say anything, but he did. So I want you to know that Jesus said, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it does not see him or know him. But you know him, because he abides with you, and will be in you, will be in you, signifying when the Holy Spirit would come upon them at Pentecost. Verse 18, I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. After a little while, the world will see me no longer, but you will see me because I live and you will live also. In that day, you will know that I am, I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and I will disclose myself to him. Do you hear the words that Jesus just said? He not only says, okay, first off, I came here to teach you and to show you, but I came here to show you my Father. See, it's, it's not about me. Even Jesus himself, never can I find in the Bible that he ever says, oh, it's all about me. He says it's about my Father. 
And he says, I'm showing you, my father, I'm showing you the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm showing you the God of the Old Testament. And I want you to know that he loves you because he sent me. And in that love for you, it is not about just now. It's not about tomorrow. It is about what we do from here on out. It's not about the memories that we make at a 100th celebration. It's about what we take from this 100th celebration to the next 100 years, 1,000 years. How about Virgie is going to be a staple in this community till Jesus returns and takes us home? Because that's what our eyes are set on. Our eyes are not set on the past only. Yes, they're wonderful memories. Uh, what Willis just shared were wonderful things. Each one of you has a memory of this church, whether growing up here, being here, uh, being involved here, or you just got stuck here driving past and you saw a tent and you thought you'd stop. But now you'll have a memory of Virgie Christian Church, and I pray that memory is not just about the people, about the tent, about the food, about the donuts, but the message or your memory is about Jesus Christ. And I pray that you'll take that with you because that's what will continue Christ's mission for the days to come. But Judas, not Iscariot, also called Thaddeus, said to him, Lord, what has happened that you are going to disclose yourself to us and not to the world? But Jesus said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him and he will come to him and we will make our abode with him. He who does not love me does not keep my word. And the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while abiding with you. Jesus was about to tell them he was going away. That can be the hardest words that we ever hear, is that someone we love is going away. Whether it's for a short time or a long time. And those often can create a flood of memories. Think about the New Testament was not written as Jesus was walking. The, 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 the apostles didn't pull out their iPad um, because they couldn't get a signal. That's why. But they didn't type in things and say, oh, I need to remember this. They had, it, they had memories of Jesus. And when they sat down to write the, the books of the New Testament, especially the four Gospels, they actually had the gift of the Holy Spirit help remind them. And that's where we go into in verse 16. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. See, you know, many times I've heard, you know, I would just love to talk to this person about Jesus. If I could just, I just don't know the words. Awesome! You don't have to! See, the Holy Spirit that resides in you will speak for you and speak through you and help you remember. Yeah, we need to put our time in. That doesn't mean you, know, you get baptized, you get up, and you're like, Woo, okay, I'm done. Put my Bible on the shelf. I don't need to do anything else. No, that means you need to pull it off. That's your playbook, right? We talk about that all the time. Your Bible is your playbook, and you need to know it. So that way, when you run into that person that doesn't know Jesus, you can tell them. Not just, yeah, yeah I know this guy named Jesus. No, I know this guy that was at the beginning when the world was created. In the beginning, we created the heavens and the earth. Jesus was there. Jesus was ready. He knew the plan that was coming. He just didn't know when it was going to happen. Just like right now, Jesus knows the plan that one day he's coming back, he's going to take us all home. Whew, we're out of here. Praise God for that because this world is getting nuts, isn't it? It's crazy right now. You can't turn on the TV. You can't turn on the radio unless it's the shine. That you don't get something that you go, oh, really? I don't want to hear this anymore. It's just dragging me down. The world is all about itself. But when we live for Christ, we are all about something greater than ourselves. 
Our, our, our mission is not to be like, ooh, look what we did. Yeah, the church has been awesome this week. I tell you, my biggest memory will not just be right now beginning to speak to you guys. My memory will be of the last three weeks. There's people in and out constantly. Hey, what can I do? Getting phone calls. Do, can I pick something up? Can I do this for you? Can I do that for you? It was awesome, and that's what a church is about. That's what made that church. I can't imagine that 100 years or 103 years ago when they brought that over by horse and wagon, that they just stood around and went, somebody else will put it together, right? No, they came together as a community of believers. And they said, we're going to pound some nails and we're going to make us a church and we're going to glorify God in that. Guys, today, I pray that when you leave here, you you are just excited. I pray that you're, you're jacked up on the Holy Spirit, but I pray that you walk out of here not with the mission of going, yep, I heard a, a beautiful music and some guy babbled for about 25 minutes, but I pray that when you walk out of here, you go, I need to tell somebody about Jesus because it's not mine to keep. It's not mine to put in my pocket and not give away, but it is mine to portray and tell and give to the entire world. Jesus continues on in verse 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. So in other words, turn off the TV, turn off your iPads, turn off your phones, and pick up his word, because it's his peace that will sustain us. Not as the world gives to you, do not let your hearts be troubled, nor let it be fearful. You have heard it said that I will go away and I will come to you. If you love me, you would have rejoiced because I go to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. Now I have told you before uh, it happens, so that when it happens you may believe. I will not be speaking much more of, with you for this, for the ruler of the world is coming, and he has nothing in me. Jesus knew that his time was very limited. What if each one of us actually knew the day that we were going home? Not like home to, you know, down the road home, but home to be with Jesus. What if we truly knew that? Would that change what we did? Would that give us more courage? You know, there's been movies that have been made about it, right? Uh, the one that he wanted to do is Bucket List, right? Every, I got to do everything on my bucket list. And once he was done, would that really make him overly happy? Would that sustain him in his passing? He did some stuff. Yeah, vacations are awesome. Don't get me wrong, memories, right? More pictures to go through. But if you knew the day you were going home, would you be a little bit more aggressive in taking somebody else with you? No, I don't mean driving in a car taking somebody else with you. I mean giving them the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you knew that tomorrow you were going to be with Jesus, that your life here on earth was done, what would you do? And who would you hurry up to tell? I remember on 9-11, I had just gotten home from the fire department and I got a text uh, turn on the TV. I had turned on the TV. I had missed the first tower getting hit, but I was sitting there watching and immediately I saw the second tower get hit and my pager went crazy and it said all firemen return to quarters immediately. All on specialty teams be prepared to be deployed. Well, I was on the hazmat team and the technical rescue team. When we, when I called in to said, I'll be on my way, it's about a 40 minute drive. And they said, make arrangements in case you don't come home. That's what I was told on the phone. Make arrangements in case you don't come home. They thought Chicago was going to get hit and we were due to Chicago uh, on their plan. You know what I did? I started calling everybody I knew. Man, I just want you to know I love you. I don't know what's going to happen. This is crazy. You know, but I just want you to know I love you. If you knew tomorrow that you weren't going to be here, who would you call and say I love you? Who would you say Christ loves you? And you need to know him more than you need to know me. Guys, today is a remembrance of, of a wonderful church and wonderful people. I love being here. I have been so blessed. Our family has been blessed to be here as part of your family. But it can't stop here. It's got to continue to go so the first part of this message was about memories and remembering and wonderful things. But the second part of this message is about rededicating this church to the next millennia of years that Christ would be glorified in what is said here and done here and shown here through each one of you 
here. Philippians 4 starts verse 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, sing it with me. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, Rejoice. 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 And again, I say, Rejoice. 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 And again, I say, Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, Rejoice. You guys just heard me sing for the first time truly in this church ever. I have been practicing that for two weeks in front of a mirror. I've had six cough drops already today to make sure my voice didn't crack. No, and that's it. I do one a day. That's I can't do anymore. But rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving in your heart and requests be made known to God. May the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Guys, when we leave this place, the devil is standing right there on 700 going, I'm going to take them all down. When we walk out of this place, we are the property of Christ Jesus. We are not to be taken over by the evil one. But he wants us. He's going to be in our minds. He's going to try to mess with us every time we turn on a TV or a screen. Every time we walk somewhere that we ought not to walk, he's going to be standing there going, I'm going to change you to my team. But Paul says here to the church in Philippi, rejoice and be strong and in all things give glory to God. Pray hard, be on your knees looking up, not down at a screen or going somewhere you ought not to go. But he says, give God the glory and God will strengthen you. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. The things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Guys, we've got to just... Look at today as a great day, a memorable day. Many, many memories are going to be shared. I have no doubt that as soon as we break here and the food guys are already over there and they're going to be cooking pork chops and chicken and everything else, we're going to be sitting down and we're going to be sharing memories, but we're going to be making memories. And as we make those memories, let us remember who gave us the ability to make those memories, and that is Christ Jesus our Lord. When we get up from these chairs, be prepared for a battle. But give your life to Christ Jesus and be prepared to do it in his strength and in his comfort and in his grace and in his love that we may fall and fail and land on our face, but Christ will be there to pick us up. And that when we walk out of here, we are filled with the Holy Spirit inside of our life guiding and directing and leading us. Let's take today to rededicate not only this church for the next however many hundreds and thousands and or till Jesus comes years, but let's rededicate our own lives to say, God, I've got things I've done. I've got things that I should not be doing. But today is the day that I promise I'm going to work 10 times harder to give you glory in each and everything that I do. Today is the day that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a plan and I'm going to talk to Bubba at work because that guy needs some Jesus. Trust me, that guy needs some Jesus. And I'm going to be the one that talks to him about it. But God, give me the words, man. I just don't know what to say. I'm nervous. I'm scared. I don't know. And the Holy Spirit will give you peace and give you those words to speak. Today... Let's rededicate to the mission of Jesus himself to bring those lost back to his Father with love that is unsurpassed and never-ending. Father, we praise you for these words. We praise you for this day. We praise you for all things. We praise you for the air we breathe and the grass we're standing on. We praise you for this tent and just everything. Father, we just praise you. 
We praise you for your holiness. We praise you for your grace, Father, and your mercy. Father, today the excitement that's been going around this church, I pray it lasts forever. I don't want it to end. I don't want this, this excitement to ever end. Father, help us to be excited to be your children and to, and to share it with others that they would come to know you. Father, I pray a blessing on the rest of this day. I pray that, that new friendships are made. I pray that, that old friendships are rekindled and memories are, are thrown out and laughter is heard. Father, we, we just take this day to say thank you for the last hundred and that we pray, Father, your blessing on the next indefinite years until your son Jesus comes to take us all home to be with you in your glory, in your heaven, and enjoy being in the presence of you for all of eternity. Father, thank you. Father, be with this food that we're going to eat here in a little bit. Pray a blessing on that. I pray a blessing, Father, on each one here, each family represented. And Father, I just pray for them, for strength, for peace, for guidance, for comfort, and for healing. We ask this all in Jesus' holy name. God's people said. <laughs>